If your shop is a work in progress and you're looking for ideas for storage and organization and efficiency, you've come to the right place. Because today we're gonna do a shop tour around. I'm gonna show you all my favorite builds. I'm gonna tell you some of those things that I had challenges with along the way and show you what's changed since the last shop tour. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with an overview of the shop. The shop is 19 feet wide and 31 feet deep. So it is a car and a half deep, but it's a two car garage. Now, everything that you see here has been added over the last eight years since I've moved in. Now, a lot has changed in those eight years. So don't think that you have to build your shop out all at one time because I definitely did not. Now, recently I moved a lot of stuff out of the other side of the shop. And <laughs> one of the things that has introduced is a lot more echo, echo. So please bear with me if there's some echo in the audio. I'm definitely gonna be doing some projects soon to take care of noise dampening in the shop. And my biggest goal over the last year was to optimize my floor space so I could get a better workflow and efficiency in the shop. And one of those questions that I was really struggling with, and I'm sure you're probably struggling with it too, is should I actually devote an entire wall to a miter station? Because that's a lot of space. And I did have a mobile cart that was working great. But what I realized was the wall space that I had before, I really just had things on there that didn't need to be there. I had an offcut wood storage rack and a bandsaw that I really wasn't using, honestly, because it was a second bandsaw. So when I finally made the decision and I made the miter station and got rid of that stand, it freed up floor space, better optimized my wall space, and it has been awesome for me. I now have this dedicated spot for my miter saw and tons of side feed. I have seven feet to the left and six feet to the right. I also have my stop block here to make repeatable cuts all the way up to the seven foot mark on the left. And that stop block makes getting those consistent cuts over and over again, super easy. If you wanna see more about the Miner Station build, I've got full videos on that as well as plans available. And also we're gonna have plans available for everything that you see around here. Basically anything that's made out of wood, we've got plans for it, links down below in the description. And when I added the miter saw station, I did get a lot more storage, which was awesome. And as I removed that bandsaw and the wood that was on the wall, I also removed some other things. There was that rolling vertical lumber rack that was right here. I had a flip top cart that was right here. And of course the miter saw stand that was mobile. And once I got rid of those, now I was able to bring in this bad boy. I've got a full sized 15 inch planer and it is great because now it is right next to the joiner. The joiner was already here, but my planer used to be on that wall back there and that was a lot of walking. So the workflow on this one is much better. I've got all my major machines right here in a row between the table saw, joiner, planer, and my miter saw. And it just makes the shop workflow a lot better. Now this area might not look a lot different from the last shop tour, but if you'll notice the garage shelves, I rebuilt those. Those used to be eight feet long and now they're only six feet. And so I realized that I actually didn't need all that space for those things that I wanted to put on the shelves and that that space would be better served for the ladder storage. So as I reduced that, it now is a great spot to store that. And I also have some metal hanging up there. So sometimes you might need to take away storage that you already made. And that's where I found myself in this situation. All right, guys, now this is probably the most exciting part of the shop tour. And that is what you don't see. Bikes, scooters, soccer balls. I have evicted them. I have successfully moved from a KTT of 10 down to a five, maybe even a four. If you're not familiar, that's kid toy takeover. That is something that plagues shops all around America, all around the world, I am sure. And I have reduced them down to three bins. We've got some kites down here, a football with some helmets and some bubbles. I don't know how I did it. Actually I do and my kids aren't happy, but I have evicted them from the shop. So let me know in the comments, what is your KTT level at, at the moment? And I just wish you the best of luck. Moms, dads, you can do it. You can fight against the kid toy takeover. I believe in you. So all that wood that I moved from those carts earlier and off of the wall had to go somewhere. And here's where it went, the mobile wood cart. This is one of my latest projects and it has been amazing. It is a great place for my plywood on the back. If you remember, the plywood used to be stored right on the lathe stand that was here. So that lathe stand also got taken out of the shop. It's actually in storage now, but this is a perfect place 
for offcuts as well as small pieces of ply. I have some vertical storage here for dowels. And this has really made a huge difference in being able to consolidate all those different offcuts and things and making one focal point. Also, if you notice some of these blankets on the ground, this is to help try to reduce some of that echo that we're getting here. So these are normally not here. So those are a lot of the changes that I've made across there. And I know you probably don't have all of that space in your shop to dedicate to it. So let me talk about if you're just starting out or maybe you only have a little portion of your garage that you can use and heaven forbid you're sharing it with cars. If I was gonna be starting out and when I actually did start out, this is what I used. I actually bought a commercial version that looked exactly like this. It has a 15 inch five drawer cabinet on the left, a 30 inch three drawer in the middle and another 15 on the right. So that's only five feet of total space. Plus it's got a work surface here on the top. So this is gonna be a spot where you can do some projects, you can store a lot of things. And in the hutch up here, you can have your most used items and it even has a little light. So you can do projects right here. If you can only dedicate a little bit, this is a great starter piece and then you can expand. And that's the beauty of the modular cabinet system that I've got going on is you could always add to this later and expand it and even turn it into a miter station down the road. I love these cabinets in my shop and I've gone with the European design with the slab doors. And I really like these drawer pulls on here with this sleek kind of modern look for the nickel pulls. But one of the things that does happen from time to time is that I get loose pulls. So I have to go around every couple of months and tighten up these drawer pulls, but hopefully I'm gonna solve that for good today. And I'm gonna do that with the help of DAP, a sponsor of today's video. They have a product which is Tank Bond Thread Stopper, and it is made for exactly situations like this. So this is the Tank Bond Thread Stopper from DAP, and I have taken the screws out and I have put this on. It's a gel coating and basically it goes around and once it dries after 30 minutes, you would reinstall it and it's gonna help dampen those vibrations and make sure that it locks into place and won't back out. And you can uninstall it and reuse it up to five times, unlike some of the more traditional thread lockers. Now, if you don't wanna use the gel and wait for the 30 minutes, they also have a cool tape, which you can use immediately. It wraps right around the threads and then you can go right in and it works the same way. This is pretty cool and this is probably what I'll be using the most. But you can use this on wood, metal, and even plastics. So I'm gonna have a link down below in the description so you can check out Tank Bond Thread Stopper in either the tape format or the gel. And a big thank you to DAP for being a sponsor of today's video. Now coming around this side of the shop, not much has changed over here. I still have my CNC, this is the Invitables X-Carve, and I've been really enjoying it. And a lot of people are wondering, do I have space for a CNC? Do I need a CNC? But for me, I'm using it to make different shapes and designs. I've done a lot of epoxy inlay work this year, and as I try to do more of the puzzle box, try to hidden features, I'm looking forward to having the CNC. It adds functionality that either I don't wanna do by hand or just can't replicate by hand, like all those geometric designs. That would be really hard to do with a handheld router, but I can do some computer work, push a button, and the machine will do it for me. So I am all on board the CNC wagon. And if some people don't think it's proper woodworking, that's okay. Everybody can have their own opinion on it. But the dust collection, now that is definitely something that I get a ton of questions about. So I wanna show you a little bit more about what I'm doing and what I still need to do with my dust collection setup. So I get asked a lot about how I keep the shop so clean and the dust collector is the heart of how I do that. So I always run dust collection to my tools when I'm running them. And right now I just have a flexible hose that I run to each one. But something else that really helps me out is this right here, which is the overarm dust collector on my table saw. Let me tell you a little bit more about that real quick. So this is the OEM saw stop version for my saw, but they do make aftermarket versions as well. It might look a little bit different, but collecting the dust where it is made is the most important thing. You wanna get it before it gets up in the air and settles down on everything, or worst case, obviously gets in your lungs. Now you're not gonna be able to capture all the dust at the point of collection. So when that stuff does get up in the air, then having air cleaners is a great way to clean the air and get out those fine dust particles as well. Because the fine ones, those ones that are like a micron big, those are the ones that are gonna get in your lungs and cause health problems if you're doing woodworking for the next 20, 30 years. And you don't wanna have that happen. So having these run in my shop helps clean all the air and make sure that my lungs are safe and that I can work here for many years to come. The real secret weapon to keeping my shop clean is actually this right here. I've got the fine TurboVac 2 and then I have a five gallon bucket on top with the dust topper Cyclone on it. And the Cyclone just collects all the dust and keeps it out of the bag. 
but this guy is awesome at just keeping the shop clean in general. Anytime I see dust around the shop, I will get out there and vacuum it. I've got a little brush attachment and the bench nozzle, which I use a ton just to get around the shop. And quite frankly, I am a bit neurotic about it. I vacuum a little bit too much, maybe like 52,000 times a day. I don't know. But whenever I see dust, I hit it with this guy and it keeps my shop clean. And that's why you never see dust in my shop because it's all in here. So this wall is kind of my mobile tool wall section. So starting over here, we've got my drill press, which is on the drill press stand, which is awesome. I've got the bandsaw, which these two tools, most of the times I just use them in place. And sometimes I'll pull the bandsaw out a little bit if I need a little bit extra room. Then I've got my router table. I've got the flip top stand, which has the Craig Foreman on top, as well as a spindle sander on the bottom, and then my drum sander as the last piece here. So it's really nice to have these tools mobile because I can put them up against the wall and they have a very small footprint, but if I need to use them, I can then pull them out. So if I'm gonna use my foreman, I can just pull this guy out, lock it into place, hook up the dust collection, use it, and then when I'm done, I can roll it right back. So this setup is great if you do have a car that you need to park in the garage because you can keep these tools out of the way on the side of the walls and then pull them out when you need them. Now, I'm not going into a lot of specifics on the machines, but I will have links down below in the description to everything that I use in my shop. And almost everything that you see here can be bought at Woodcraft, who has been an amazing sponsor of the channel over the last several years. So if you're lucky enough to have a Woodcraft local to you, you can go check out the machines at that store. But if you're not, that's okay too, because you can shop on woodcraft.com and pick up basically anything that you need to do your woodworking projects. They've got all the supplies and tools that you could want. So go check them out and big thank you to Woodcraft for being a great sponsor of the channel. Now we're at the back wall of the shop and one of the things that I've added since the last tour is the upgraded drill charging station. This was really nice because it's an extended version and this little pull out here with a little storage space for my bits actually is one of my favorite things about it. Plus it's got a couple drawers for drilling and driving. So having a good place to store all of your power tools is awesome. I'm gonna be upgrading this one soon to have that wider variety as well. And on top of the cabinet, I do a lot of staging in between projects here and also where I charge all my batteries. And then below I've got a lot of fasteners and different things in this cabinet back here. In the back of the shop, we've got Norm Abram. He's holding it down back here, making sure that whenever I'm making draws, I'm doing it the right way. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glass. But Norm has a new neighbor, the gold play button. We passed a million subscribers last year since the last shop tour. And I just wanna give another big thank you to everybody that's been with us along the way. We really appreciate your support. So back in the center of the shop, this is where I have my workbench, AKA my assembly table. Now, this is a commercial version. I did not make this. I get a lot of questions about that. And I do want to make my own, and here's why. There's a few things I don't like about this bench. It has been nice, but the dog holes, it's like a love-hate relationship. They are nice and they are convenient for clamping, but I drop screws down in here constantly, and I am just tired of it. So my next one, I am not gonna do dog holes. Also, the width of this bench is not quite enough for what I need. Uh, it is 25 inches and I do a lot of cabinets which are 24 inches and that just doesn't give enough room, especially when I need to have clamps on either side. I also want it to be a bit longer. So when I make my own version, that's gonna be nice. And I'm also gonna have storage down below because this one is just open and I wanna better optimize the storage and have my clamps and things that I use for assembly all in one spot. And speaking of projects yet to come, back here on the Miner Saw Station, I still wanna do some work here. So I've got this open area up here and I'm not sure if I wanna add another cabinet or I might actually hard pipe in some dust collection and put a hood around here. But honestly, it's not too bad. The dust stays pretty well contained back there and then I can just hit it with the shop vac, which you guys know I like to do. But also over here, I wanna add some small part storage. So utilize this area a little bit better. And I think between those two, it should be a really nice addition and really fill out the miter saw station. If you wanna build anything that you've seen or if you wanna build everything that you've seen, we actually have plans available and we have an all shop bundle where you can get every project in the shop at a big discount. So you can check that out in the link down below in the description. I wanna give a big thank you to all those folks who've been joining the Builders Club and get out there and build something awesome.